If I propose to you, if we do all these things, you are now my responsibility. If we go broke, no one's going to look at you like, hey, what happened to y'all? Everyone's going to look at me like, hey, yo, how could you let that happen? Mm -hmm. That's the responsibility of us. So that's the, and that's the pressure we have. So when we say, hey, yo, I'm not going to get married until I'm financially stable, that's a real thing. Let's give it up again one more time for Nice and Deep Podcast. Yes, sir. All right, all right. Yes, sir. Testing, testing. Okay. Yo, what's the deal, y'all? Hope all is well, man. Welcome to Grown Folks Business. Mm -hmm. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. And wait a minute, fella. This ain't another episode. We got our live. first live show. We got our first live show. And you guys are here with us. Oh, my God. This is, this is honestly... Because of the summer that we had as a unit, we are about to share. This is the best summer of our lives, I believe. I believe this summer that we had as a collective unit is the best summer of our lives. I agree. I agree. Oh, y'all don't even know what y'all clapping for yet. Y'all don't even know what y'all clapping for. Oh, here we go. Man. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We're going we gonna to go in order. Dude just proposed to his queen, <laughs> Chanel. Let's give Chanel some love. Yeah, smooth. Yeah, smooth. Yes, move. Yes, move. Okay. Okay. My dog, oh, just got married. Oh, something there. Look at it. It's something there. Hey. You got real, real hardware. Hey, so, so, so I, I don't know who was in the comments saying, like, when y'all gonna get married? When y'all gonna propose? Okay. Okay. Conversation gotta change a little okay. bit. And I started a family. Okay. You see, you, see, you see the hat, dad gang, fully involved in the dad gang. You know, 2023, the summer, we'll never forget this summer, fellas. Man, and our first live show, give it up for y'all. Y'all looking, looking really good, man. Seriously. Really, really good. I see you, Rome. I see you, Whitley. Ooh. What's up, baby? How you doing? I see you, Bryson. God damn. Front row and center, dog. She's so fine. God damn. Um, but check this out. I, real quick, real quick, man. Hey, just make some noise if I met you this weekend and invited you this weekend and you're here. Okay. Hey, thank you guys for coming. A lot of people was ignoring my text messages, Ooh. ignoring my DMs, and it's crazy that people that I met this weekend pulled up and people that I know for a long time didn't. So shout out to y'all. Shout out hey. to y'all for being here. You know, All right. you, you know they say you can't be a prophet amongst your own. Okay. Heard you. Okay, okay, now look, my personal goal, I haven't spoke to these guys about it yet. Tonight is to help some people find a husband or a wife. That's my personal goal. Jump in uh, the deep end. Come on, man. I didn't know we was here, bro. That's my, that's my personal goal, Jeez. all right? Because... Because this is what happened, right? So one of my, hold on. I'm going to kick it to y'all right there. I'm going to kick it to y'all right now. It's nice over here. That's all I'm saying. Look, I'm going to kick it to you like this. I invited one of my homegirls. I invited one of my homegirls to the event tonight, right? She says, yeah, I'm going to make it. She texts me back a day later talking about, yo, the girlie's got a question. I said, okay, what's the girlie's question? She said, does it really cost $40? I said, yeah, it costs $40, and you get some two-drink minimum. She said, Duke, you've been out the game too long. Ugh. Women don't want to pay $40 unless they're single, marketable, handsome men that's guaranteed to bag them. $40? $40. <laughs> $40. So, so if, you, if you're a single, marketable, tall, handsome man, just make some noise really quick. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Fellas in the building, fellas in the building. Okay. So, so they're here then. Okay. I think I heard what? About two, what? I heard about two what? guys. 
heard of okay, two okay, guys. okay. Two guys up here. Bro. Okay. Hey, I heard. Hey, why do they have to be tall? Okay, let's just say. <laughs> let's just say. <laughs> let's call it. Hey. Let, oh. Let's call it. Oh, uh, oh, hey, hey, ladies, help me out. Let's say <laughs> five ten. Ah. Uh, okay. 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 Take okay. Her. We take, take five ten. Yeah. Okay. Or is it six feet? Ah, uh, sorry, bro. Oh, sorry, bro. Nah. Hey, hey, but if you're tall enough, hey, she will find you. <laughs> hey, stand on your wallet, man. <laughs> Woo. Oh. Man. All right, all right, all right. Let me stop playing. Let me stop playing. Let me stop playing. Yeah. All right, all right. Hey, wow, dude. Jump in hey. the deep end. Hey, man. I'm also choosing violence tonight, too, so. He did I'm gonna let that. some of y'all have backstage. it. He's choosing violence tonight. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I wanna, I wanna make sure everybody leave with a husband or a wife. That's my goal. Hey, look, cause hold on, no, no, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it real. Hey, listen, you know this too. Since I proposed to my fiance. Come on. Come on. Say it again. 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 Since I proposed to my fiance, I had no problems. Everything been blissful. Peachy. Peachy. And I want that for all my brothers. I agree. Listen, I, agree. I want that for all my brothers. I agree. Because, I agree. because all we hear on social media is how, how tough the dating scene is and how women and men can't get along and this and this and that. And I'm just saying it's different over here. That's all I'm saying. It's peaceful. So over I here. want that for y'all. So that's my goal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bliss, give it up for Bliss. Let's give it up for Bliss. <laughs> All right, look. So Duke, you engage. I'm, I want to. I want to get to O. Oh, you. You're married, bro. Man. Yeah. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. How many? Just um, you know. Let me just check the temperature really quick. How many men in here are married? Any men? Any married men in here? You. 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 Hey, we got about two. Ooh. Two to three. Two to three. Well, y'all. Oh, he's throwing up gang signs. <laughs> <laughs> Mary gang. Hey, what a, yeah. well, the Mary guy's gonna know, hopefully soon enough, the other men will know. Like, I feel like I just knocked my girl again all over for the first time. No, I'm serious. The, 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 the level of, of, of interest I have for her, her deepest and longest thoughts, the butterflies I get in my stomach when she walk in the room, the level of comfortability I get from her presence. Oh my God. Yo, yo, it's, oh. it's just as prevalent today as it was seven years ago when we met. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. I, 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 I've never felt so aligned in my life. And, and it's mm. crazy because it seems like that alignment is trickling down to every other aspect in my life. Do we have any, any believers in here? Any believers? Okay, okay so y'all so y'all know y'all know the verse, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and gains favor from the Lord, right? I feel like I know it's early. I know it's early. I'm freshly, I'm a newlywed, right? But I feel like I'm walking in my gaining favor from the Lord era right Those now. Of you that think that gospel music has gone too far. You think we've gotten too radical with our message. Well, I got news for you. You ain't heard nothing yet. And if you don't know, now you know. Go to the Hey, hey, Come on. Hey, fellas, we got a show to do here. Come on, man. Hey. Come on, man. Hey. 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 Hello. This thing on. Hey. Hey, I'm not playing. This thing on. This thing on. It's cooking, dog. Hey. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I'm not playing. I'm feeling really man. good. I'm feeling really good about the space that I'm in, man. I just got back from a two-week honeymoon. We was in Bali for two weeks, enjoying each other's love, enjoying each other's presence. Man, and um, it's a beautiful space. So just like Duke was um, alluding to or saying earlier, man, like, I wish and I hope for all the brothers in here to have this feeling that I'm feeling right now, bro, because it's special. It really is. It really is. Hey, look, sometimes, so we... We got a, a, an extensive relationship up here. We've been knowing each other for years. And sometimes I look at these brothers in the face and say, who cloned you? Like, who, <laughs> who is this guy now? We have been through so much life together. So to hear my brothers speak life into their women, into loving their women, into catering to their women, and into just being there to build with their women, is, it's amazing to me. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Like, I experienced childbirth. I experienced it. I was there. And I, I said to myself, fellas, y'all not going to really like this, honestly. I said, is there a question on who's stronger? Wow. 
Wow. We stronger, bro. But I don't no, know, bro. No, I don't know, bro. There's certain things that they got to go through. That, I don't know, man. We hey, stronger. We can't even fathom, bro. Hey, my son came out, right? Oh, give my it up son. for that. Give it up for that, bro. My son came out. Hey, hey, I love that for you. I love that for you, bro. Yeah. I, I really do, man. Hey. And I love that for y'all. And I love that for anyone that's had kids. And I love that for my mom. He chooses right? the violence. But, yeah. but I don't personally think that. Are you saying that women are stronger than men? No, I'm, I'm saying this. I'm saying this. Check this out. Is that what he said? the violence. Oh. oh, listen, listen, listen. Okay, look, listen. You said no question? I don't know. Listen, no I, question. if I can have babies, I would for her. <laughs> <laughs> I would, but I don't. I can't do it. Hey, I Duke, can't do hey, it. Duke, check this out. Check this out. She's laying there. Uh, baby, come out. Oh, my God. Worst pain of her life. Crazy. Looks over and says, Go with the baby. <laughs> and went back to her agony. I said, wow. 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 Okay. I, I, could, I couldn't imagine even thinking to say, hey, you know what? Go and be with our child. Go and make sure he's safe. Go and make sure he's looked after. And it, it, again, I said, is there a question on who's stronger? So I bring something to the audience today. OK. I bring something to the audience today, right? Me and, me and my lady, we started with a long-distance relationship. Duke and Chanel, long-distance relationship. I want to ask you guys, do you guys believe in long-distance relationship? Are they real? Can it happen? A lot of yeses in here. That's a lot of yeses a lot in of here. Yes, and you say so-so. Yeah, so. uh, uh, I'm, I'm like that, too. I'm like you. Uh, 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 you never thought about it, though? Nah, I, at the time when I met Candace, nah, it wasn't in the cars for me. That wasn't in the cars at all. You know, no. Nah. Y'all build different, y'all build, but you guys also met y'all ladies at different stages in y'all lives. I'm, I'm also gonna say this. Obviously, I, I feel like as a solid dude, I've met a lot of good women in my life. The right woman just happened to live in Austin, Texas when I met her. I feel it. I knew she was the right woman. I, I, I knew she was the right woman as soon as I seen her, and I said, I'm gonna be persistent with this one. I chased my girl for three years. Boy. Boy. Three? Three years. Yeah. <laughs> Three years. Three years. Three years. Three years. Three years. Hey, the only thing yeah. that matters is the finish line, okay? Three years. Three years. You can choose whatever number you want, but what they can't deny is this. The first time we ever went on a date, did I make her my girlfriend? Immediately. First date. First date. First date. First date. Yeah, first date. When you know, you know. Mm. I know Charles, he said he had, he had some thinking that he had to do. We're going to do the joint pod and we're going to get into that too, okay? But, you know, when, when you know, you know. So we had an episode. It was, we were talking about good woman versus right woman, right? We agree there's a difference there, right? Okay. So, what, what's a good woman to you guys? What's mm. a good woman? Mm. You said what? It's crazy. <laughs> she said, y'all tell us. We women don't know. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, but I, I, feel like, I feel like all women in here believe That's that they're funny. good women, though. I mean, do y'all believe y'all good women? Every, every woman in here don't believe they're a good woman? All right, let's, let's do this. Show of hands. Absolutely not. Show, all right, show of hands. Show of hands, all right? Let's, let's try to be as transparent as possible. We all family. Show of hands. Raise your hand if you think you're a good woman. Everyone's hand should be up, right? <laughs> we got two Everyone's right hand should be up. Cool. <laughs> Look for her. Look for her. Look for her. Okay. <laughs> Yo, but but I love that for y'all as well. Like that's great. That's but, great. But no, great. really. Um, just from listening and, and, and speaking to a lot of women, right? Um, a lot of women say they have problems dating because there's no good men out here, right? And I think they use themselves as a measuring stick for why there's no good men, and, and I think that's valid. Um, but I think a lot of the dating woes doesn't stem from you not necessarily being a bad woman, but just being the wrong one for the, for the guy. You know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of times we 
write down a list of all the things we want in a man and create this avatar for this man and hope that you know he fits our lifestyle and, and us. And it's just usually doesn't work like that, right? I feel like everyone in this room is created for a specific individual. Mm -hmm. um, if, if that's something that you want, but I can write all the qualities about a woman, um, I could write all the qualities that she has, right? And, and see it in another woman and it just wouldn't work, right? Because mm -hmm. the qualities that I write down that uh, represents a good woman, but not the right one. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So she could be beautiful. She can uh, she can cook. She can ha have loyalty, and she could be family oriented, and all these things. But there's just key ingredients that I can't even quantify that's lacking, right? The intangible. And, and, and I can the only. Right off my and I can only. You can only um, experience that. You can only find that through experience, and time. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, I would, you know, I would ask you guys. You know, not not that you guys are sitting around like waiting on on, on a dude to save you. I'm not saying that, but I would cons ask you guys to just consider that, right? It's it's not me, nor is it them. It's just the circumstances right now. You know what I'm saying? And not th not allow that to um, cloud your perception of men, right? Because there are, I think personally, just from speaking to a lot of guys in my community and our network. There's a lot of good men out here, right? There's a lot of, and it's a fallacy to, to, to assume that there's no good men out here, all right? So, so I would just implore you guys to consider that, you know, moving forward. Okay, smooth. Yeah. Real smooth. Okay, smooth. Living up to his name. Come on, man. Come on, man. Man. You know what I'm saying? But, um. Hey, Duke, I thought you was choosing violence today. Oh, that man. was so peaceful. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to get to the violence in a little bit. Where Charles I, just, I just had to get that one off. So, you got to get that off? So they can use it against they, me later. You let them see your heart. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but on the other hand, <laughs> on the other hand, some women think they good. Uh-oh. Here we go. Uh-oh. He, you, you. Hey, no, for real, for real. Can I give you my theory, though, about that? All right, so look. Look, look, look. I feel like a lot of women say they're they're good women based on the things that they've been through, mm. right? So a lot of women say, "Man, I deserve a good man because I just been through so much trauma, or I've been through so much pain, or I've gone through so much. I deserve a good man." You know what I mean? Instead of "Yo, I deserve a good man," or you know, love or a good life because I've treated people well. I've treated men well. I've done good deeds, right? And I feel like, yo, nobody cares about no one's trauma when it comes to like who I'm picking as my wife or you're picking as your husband. I could never come to any woman and say, yo, I got bullied as a kid. I'm a good man. <laughs> She's gonna look at me like, yo, I'm sorry. I can't help you, mm -hmm. right? And, and I feel like that's the, and, and it sucks, but that's kind of the tone that I've getting a long time. It's just like, yo, like, and I get it. I get it. After you deal with so many pointless, after you have so many pointless relationships and you deal with so many ain't shit men and you go through all these men that's not good for you, it's just like, yo, Lord, cat, let me get a break, you know? But you, you feel me? It's like, yo, can I catch, can I finally catch a break? But it just don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you still got to, you know, for lack of better words, you still got to put in the work to deserve that if you want that. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And that's just my theory. That's, you know what that's, I'm saying? Not, that's just essentially just saying I know how to battle or withstand adversity. It's not really saying I possess the, good, the qualities of being the right woman or a good woman. Correct. You know, it's just saying that I, I just, I've, I've been battle tested and I've came out on the other side. It's, it's, that's all it's saying. Correct. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I do think that's one part of the fold. I, I think that's a part of the fold, but I also think when you are with your partner and once you get past the niceties and things like that, the things they have dealt with is a bit of your cross to carry. Like that, you, you carry those, that cross. Yeah, that's different. That doesn't mean that they're a good person. That's what I'm saying. Like once you're with this person, yeah, you should massage it and you take on some of that trauma because now you've made this person your person, but 
I can never look at you and see what you've been through. I mean, maybe you could be like, maybe I could have a savior complex where it's like, I see what you've been through and I want to like save your life. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe that. But still, that's not me looking at you as a good woman. That's just looking at looking at you as someone that needs help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say I'm putting on my cape like men do. Right. And, and, and try to save you. Come on, man. These niggas can't fuck with me out here. These niggas can't fuck with me out here, man. These niggas can't fuck with me out here. They can't love you. Here we run the game. Sit your ass. <laughs> Sit down. I don't know. Look, we, we do one little live show, and Duke all of a sudden come into Dr. Duke, you know. Come into Dr. Duke. I see a lot of my family in here. I see, hey, what's up? What's up, man? I see my family. I see Whitley in the back. I see OJ somewhere in here. I see a lot. I'm trying to act up. Hey, speaking of, where the nice and neat family at in here? Oh. Okay. 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 Wow, man. You guys, you guys came out here to see Nice and Neat live. That is, come, come on now. That's, hey, I that's heard. disrespectful. Now, that's just. I heard. Hold up now. Come I on heard now. Charles. Hey, look, look, look. Hey, you said disrespectful, right? Yeah. Is it is it disrespect or you just didn't like it? I'm actually, I'm just offended. I'm offended. Okay. I ain't gonna hold you. I'm offended. I'm offended because there's a difference between disrespect and being offended. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, like, I mean, he ain't intentionally do that to me. Got you. So it's no disrespect. I'm just offended because it happened. You know what I mean? That oftentimes happens in relationships too. <laughs> Doctor O in the building. I'm just saying, something, a situation could happen with your partner, you know what I mean? Something is said that you don't like and you feel like you were disrespected, but that doesn't mean that your partner disrespected you, just meant you, she may have rustled, she or he may have ruffled your feathers and you just feel offended in that moment, you know what I mean? And I think we have to identify the difference between being offended and being disrespected, because if it's being disrespectful, you gotta check it. You gotta check it and we have to address it. But if I'm just being offended, I gotta kinda look inward and say, hey, hold on, well, well, why is it offending me? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And really dive into that and dive into self and figure out what's going on with myself, you know? So it kind of sounds like disrespect is more of a, it's, it's, it's been communicated. You know I don't like this. Absolutely. You know that it's not accepted in this relationship. We've actually already talked about it. And you did it again. And you did it again. Being offended is like, oh, we, we probably haven't even talked about this at all. This is something new. It's something new. It's something new. It's a trigger. Talk about it. You know, so... I, I've, I've experienced, I think that's a very tough conversation to have in a relationship when you're trying to let your partner know, like, babe, we actually never talked about this. And I know you feel like I should just know this, but whenever we compare in ourself to everybody around us, nobody's ever going to live up to that. Mm. And you're going to always be upset. So when you sit down and you're just like, hey, I would have never did that, but because they did it, I now feel disrespected. And you've never communicated to them like, hey, I don't like that. Let's not do that. We don't do that in our relationship. That's not necessarily disrespect. That's just a conversation that you don't want to jump into. Because mm. you got to be vulnerable and say, hey, yo, I feel this way when you do this because of this. I, I'm, I'm big on using I statements. You guys know what I statements are? Yeah. OK, so let's use an I statement, for example. My man right here, he step on my shoe. I can't say you disrespected me if he just walked by and he accidentally stepped on my shoe. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't say you disrespected me. But now, he... <laughs> hey, I don't like that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. If, if you did it again, now it's disrespect. That might have been an accident. I don't really know if that was on purpose or not. See, now you disrespected me. Now you disrespecting me. But I, I, I feel like in relationships so many times, we are afraid to express our vulnerability because that's a place that you got to go to again. That's a place where you got to feel the trauma, feel the hurt that you once felt before, and now you have to lay it on the table and be willing to accept what somebody gives you back when you express your vulnerability. So in the space of disrespect or using your I statements, you kind of got to operate from a place of, Hey, I feel this way when you do this, not you're disrespectful. Yeah. You guys feel that? Okay. That's a, that's a, sometimes, I think you said it, those are tough conversations to have, but within relationships, you gotta be willing to go through the hard conversations. Sometimes it's gonna be uncomfortable. A lot of times it's gonna be uncomfortable, you know, especially with your partner, but if you guys wanna 
uh, progress and elevate to another level of intimacy and just progression within your relationship, you gotta constantly have those tough conversations. You have to iron them out, even if neither one of us really wanna do it. We can't just sweep it underneath the rug and expect for both of us to be able to advance and move past the moment. Somebody's gonna be affected by it if we don't address it and nip it in the butt. But again, it's a hard conversation to have, but we gotta get comfortable being uncomfortable in those situations with your partner if you want it to be a sustainable and successful relationship. Mm -hmm. Let's give it up for that, y'all, real quick. Can we give it up? Yeah, let me ask y'all a question. Hey, when y'all when y'all have um when y'all have disagreements or you guys argue, how do you guys handle it? Do you guys like try to communicate? Or do you guys give each other space or do you guys just scream it out? What's the what's like the protocol? Just if you go up where I go, I hope go up where I... What's the protocol? Communication. You communicate that. What does that mean though? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys don't give each other space. You guys talk it through. What about going to bed mad? Is that on the table? I, I saw something. Woo! Hey, give it up for 13, 13 years, years right here in the what? front. Jeez. I saw, I saw like, a, um, I saw on Instagram some psychologist said that it's actually okay to go to sleep mad sometimes. Do y'all think, do y'all believe that? You do, that. do you believe that? Yeah. How can you sleep mad? Like, we, we can say solve it later, but go to bed mad? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you in it. You yeah. in it. And when's the best time when you have an argument or have the disagreement, when's the best time to, like, talk about it? Is it right, at, right after? Or do you schedule it? Or how does it work with y'all? <laughs> it's time to eat. Schedule. Somebody said schedule. That's a good point. Can it be sporadic? Yeah, okay. I have to schedule with her. <laughs> Gotta pencil it in. I have to schedule. She's like, I don't, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. She be going to the gym. I gotta go to the gym. I don't have time for this. I'm like, if you don't get your ass right here, man. No, but look, hey, I do believe that conflict resolution is a super important part of building relationships and sustaining relationships. A lot of the things that are very trivial become big issues because we don't know how to communicate them, all right? And communication, when you just hear, you just think, I need to know how to talk, but you have to know how to listen, right? You guys all know that. Mm. And I think listening is even more important than speaking, all right? What does no, listening look like? Well. <laughs> what does listening I look like? No, <laughs> just listen. <laughs> no, listen, <laughs> just listen, I don't know. <laughs> But like listening is really important and um, because when you don't listen, the only thing you care about is being right. Mm. And all you care about is contradicting what the person's saying so you could be right. And when you care about being right and that's all you care about, logic, right, facts, all these things get thrown out the window and it just escalates into bigger arguments, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, one thing that I like to, and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, only, I'm only 34. I'm not old, and I'm still young, so I'm not gonna act like I know everything, um, but I've been intentional about, you know, my relationship and trying to like lead us in the right direction. And I think when it comes to like conflict resolution, I feel like one, you gotta give each other the floor without interruption, right? Mm -hmm. You don't wanna speak at the same time because no one likes being over-talked. Um, two, I would sit down, right? When I'm standing up, I'm a little more sporadic and my hands is all over the place and my tone is all over the place and, you know, it just gets bad. Um, three, I would re really, really, like, like, take deep breaths. And I know it sounds corny, but that shit could really save your relationship mm -hmm. if you take deep breaths because when you take deep breaths, it, is, it allows you to think and process about what you're hearing and what you want to say. Right, and if you can regulate what you want to say, you know that's like half the battle because a lot of us are reactive based on tone mm -hmm. and volume and curse words and gestures and all those things. You know what I'm saying? So it's really important um, that we do those things, right? Not that y'all care, but I, th I, th I told y'all my whole job was to help you guys find a husband and a wife. Oh man! So like these are things that I want you guys to take home and like write down. So when you guys put a notepad you know, out. 
when you guys when you guys get into the thick of something, you guys are like, hey, yo, Duke told me to sit my ass down. So let me sit down. So I hope that helps. Yeah, let's speaking of the married couples, let let's let's get for better or best out here. Well, the funny thing is, is the first person that hold on, hold on, let me let me do some math. Duke engaged, <laughs> old Mary gang, beloved seven in. Oh, Jalan, what's going on? What's going on there? <laughs> Respectfully. You know. Respect oh, he went there. Oh, bro. Let's get right oh, into it. We here. Oh, oh, bro. We here now. So I, I want you guys to know this is this is a beautifully uh, <laughs> crafted question. And this this doesn't come from beloved. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? This come from beloved. <laughs> Why are you no, looking look, at me? Look, no, seriously, you know, this is something that I noticed. This is something I noticed. We actually talked about this. Um, I think it was episode 80. I think we talked about this on episode 80, where people ask people the question, they say like, yo, why, when are you getting married? You know, what, what does that look like, right? And it makes me think about you, beloved, right? I'm here. It makes me think about you. You were saving for such a long time. A long time. Saving for such a long time to buy your then girlfriend mm -hmm. the ring of her dreams. You know, the, the ring that she could walk around with and tell everybody no. The ring she could do, as you disrespected her, the Beyonce dance. You know? <laughs> and I'm, I just think if somebody asked you why you were in that space, when do you guys get married? How would that have made you feel? As she wasn't picking up Happy Meals for you guys. Mm, okay, let's get into you know, it. Like, uh oh, let's get into it. You want to bring me back there? Because <laughs> nobody knew where you were at. <laughs> You know, nobody knew where you were at, and you know, <laughs> not, 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 even, not even your lovely lady. I know how much them haircuts cost, so <laughs> hey, and, and, and I know how much that ring costs. <laughs> Hello. So, for Duke and Omar, what were your, what was your thought process? What, how did you know that your wife, fiance, was the one? Mm. Man, time. We spent, my fiance, well, excuse me, my wife, that sounds so good to say. Mm. Talk your shit, King. Talk your shit, King. Say it again, say it again. Say it again. My wife, yeah. me and my wife spent a lot of intentional time together, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. And when I sit back and I reflect on other relationships that I had in the past, the one thing that was really missing was that intentional one-on-one -on -one time. And the second that her and I both committed to spending intentional one-on-one -on -one time, our level of intimacy raised. It went to another level. And um, I think by it taking a step to another level, let me know that this was the one for me. And this was, it was time for me to say, you know what, it's time to take the next step and make this woman my fiance and soon to be my wife. You know, but I, th I've only gained that perspective through time. Yeah. And it, it was very, very intentional. It's not, and I'm not just talking about just hanging out on the couch together. You know, I'm not like, I'm talking yeah, about no phones, no music, real conversation, challenging each other, uh, gaining you perspective preaching right one now. another. You, you know preaching what I mean? Right now. Talking about diving in on into different topics and, and trying to get an understanding of why you think like that. And giving, getting her uh, the ability to understand why I see things through this lens. Yeah. And I, I don't think we ever would have reached this point in our lives if we didn't, if we weren't intentional about spending one-on-one -on -one time together. That was it right there. Dope. Um, so for me, I think it was the fact that I was able to communicate how I felt with her, all right? In the past, when I've dealt with other women, I never felt comfortable saying, yo, I didn't like this, or I like that, because I, I was just like, it's not my business, you know? But it was, got to a certain point where we were spending so much time together, and I just felt comfortable like, yo, I really didn't like that. So it told me that, okay, the only reason I'm telling her this is because I want her to change it because I, want, I see her in my future. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So once I realized that, I was just like, okay, I really can fall for this person, you know? And I think another thing was um, I never felt the, the game of cat and mouse with her. Mm -hmm. it, was a sm it was just smooth. It was just like things flowed naturally, you know? It was like, hey, yo, we, like, hey, I need you to meet me here. Okay, cool. I need you to wear this. Okay, cool. It was not, it was just a lot of, back, and that's not like, like um, controlling anything, yeah. but it's just like, it was just, it was just effortless, you know? And I felt like, yo, man, I like this. I like how it feels. I like the chemistry. I just like the way we flow it. Um, yeah, I, I want to keep doing this. 
But she also like she also left me early on. Oh, yes. let's Leave talk him, about sis. it. Leave him. <laughs> Leave him, sis. Okay, girl. Okay. Charles, didn't I threaten to leave you? You threatened many a times to leave me. <laughs> she left me, dog. Much to my chagrin. Um, I want to answer the question real quick, too, okay. though. Like, let me give you your flowers. And so, obviously, I was in a season when I was, okay, this is the one. But the, the consistent theme that you showed me was how much better you elevated my life. Like, it was just like, I don't know how deep you were with God or whatever, but, like, you saw more for me than I saw for myself. And growing up on the west side of Chicago, my mama said, Shot Town Tina's in the building. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to moms in the building. She had us traveling exposed to stuff, but I didn't realize how much I did not know about the world. And it was like, hey, you can start your own business and go to work. Hey, like when I was playing 2K, because I got disappointed. Shout out NBA 2K, it came out today. Um, <laughs> Because I was disappointed that I was getting rejected. <laughs> Listen, we all got our things. We all got our things. Relax, relax. Um, because I was getting rejected from so many jobs, like you would grab a laptop for me and start applying for jobs to me that you thought I was right for because I was just over getting told no. And so it was just like the consistent theme of like you wanting and, and seeing more and better for me in our future than I saw in myself. I was like, yo, she going to be with me from the highs, the highs, the lows, lows. And yeah. this is somebody that I want to go through that journey with, because it ain't always going to be perfect, but I know I got a fucking rider. Come and on, that was why. Man. Come on. Why come on, come on, come on. Hey. Yo. 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 I, for y'all three, you know, since Charles wanted to exclude me from the club. <laughs> that's, that's tough, tough pill to swallow. Um, I, think, I think I'm going to ask you guys something that I feel like can help all of the men in the room. Okay. The, aspi the uh, aspiring to get married men, I should say, that are in, are in the room. As men, we have a, 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 fina a financial clock that we think about. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. When you were in the space of like, yo, I'm getting ready to propose, what were the things that you were running through in your head that you had to make a checklist of, right? First question for the fellas. I want you to think about this question too. For a man to propose to you, what was the checklist you needed to see? Oh, so, we going there. So I think men lean on the financial a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I think for men, it is a financial game. I hear that all the time. Well, financially, I'm not there. I can't take on a wife or a family. But my thing is, and I feel like Charles will say this, it was having a partner that helped him elevate financially. So I, I think sometimes men try to do it alone and you don't have to. You can take your partner along for the ride. We want to ride with you. I want to be with you when you have nothing. I, she I, on one a day. <laughs> I, I, I thought she was going to go, oh, Duke, oh, no. bring it in, Duke. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm here for. And, and Duke, I, I know what you're about to say. I know what you're about to say. But I, I know what you're about to say. Hit it with the heart. Duke, go ahead, bro. I don't have it, Duke. But we're also talking about someone that you're a committed partner with, right? Like, so not someone I just met on the street. No, I'm not taking you out the mud on the street. But if we've been together and we're riding, like, it don't got to be perfect. But we together, we're going to make it work. Mm, okay. Yes, Duke. <laughs> I, I'm going to give you that. Your mother-in-law. <laughs> I'm going to let y'all finish your answers. I'm going to give you that. Okay, y'all go ahead. <laughs> Wait, what was the men's question? <laughs> nah. Uh, the criteria. Yeah. The criteria. Yeah. What's the criteria? Oh, so. Is it is a. Yeah, what's y'all checklist? <laughs> wow. Well, I got married in my 20s, so I want to hear from the, the, the married engaged in the 30s. Man, mine was just like. <laughs> huh? What'd you say? Mine wasn't even a checklist. Mine was just, yo, how much. I mean, honestly, like how much money do I have saved? Because investing into a, a ring that my woman is proud of is a, is a, it's a serious thing. It's Absolutely. something that I believe that all men are really literally thinking about. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, but to kind of piggyback off of what you were saying, I kind of believed, I already believed because of what m me and my woman had accomplished as being in a relationship, I was confident that I was gonna make more money with her. It was very, very clear that be, by being with her, we were a force to be reckoned with and things were coming our way that God just had ordained for us, you know what I mean? So 
But in terms of looking at the savings account and looking at how much money I have and how much money I feel comfortable with, with spending on this ring, honestly, it really didn't phase me that much because I knew that whatever I was going to put out was going to come right back to Hello. me. That's you know, beautiful. I, That's I, I beautiful. honestly believe that. I honestly believe that. And honestly, honestly, it's happened. It's happened. You know, every, every dollar that I've spent or have put out for my woman or for us Can't has bet. come back tenfold. Okay. Tenfold. Amen. That's what a good partner would do. And I wish I had that level of faith in, in my wife, but I didn't <laughs> because I went, I went into saving for the ring blindly, y'all. And I was like, yo, I know I'm going to propose, but we ain't going to have no money, so it's going to take two and a half years <laughs> yeah. to do the wedding that we wanted. And so right after I proposed, and I was like, all right, let's figure out when we're going to get married in 2023, and it was 2012. She was like, oh, I got this money on standby for the wedding. I said, wait, what? How much money you got? A lot. How, many How much money you got? <laughs> How many people done died? I said, Mr. you been hiding money from me all this time? Ladies, if it didn't work out, I wasn't going to leave. See? <laughs> you see what you see with that? What are we doing? Do you know what I'm talking about? You know Shit. So like all that, all that shit you was talking, fake. <laughs> they don't really, they don't, hey fellas, hold on, fellas. I do not believe none of that shit, man. <laughs> hey, don't believe none of that shit. If you gotta stay single till you stack up, stay single till you stack up. <laughs> but no. when he came with the ring, what did I do? I put my money on the table. I said, you put your Ooh. money on the table. Nah, I got you. Now I can put mine on the table. Nah. He wasn't giving me, he wasn't putting all his money on the table when we were dating. And I do think when you're dating, there needs to be some level of privacy. That's like, real. I, got you. That's not, real. I'm not gonna put all my cards on the table. I'm also not gonna leave here broke. Like I'm not gonna let nobody bleed me dry. Yep. Yeah, I feel that. No, 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 I know that's right. That's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's real. And so she saw some things that she ain't like when we was dating. She kind of overstepped, but then OD overstepped. But when the ring came, she was like, "All right, we need to fix your credit because this yeah. is <laughs> this not gonna work for me." She will allude to, "Oh, you really want to buy that right now?" Like she'll give hints. Yeah, I'll be yeah. like, yeah, I want to buy that right now. I got, you know, two hundred fifty dollars up on this credit card. And I, yeah, it's one, it's one eighty seven. <laughs> like, but, like, but no, really, that's no. plenty. That's Re plenty. Really, minimal no. payment thirty five. Like we gonna be alright. <laughs> oh shit. Oh y'all ain't been there before. Oh, it's, maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. But yo, I'm sorry. No, but really, I'm no, sorry. Like, you gotta understand though, right? Because the same way you you're letting um us sit and know. Hey yo, like we really don't. We, hey, you, we want to ride with you. We want to build with you, right? All these things. All we've heard growing up is like, yo, no woman is gonna want you unless you have X. That's a lot of pressure on us that we don't communicate, right? So you gotta understand the mindset that we coming into it with, right? Because if we get married, if I propose to you, if we do all these things, you are now my responsibility. If we go broke, no one's gonna look at you like, hey, what happened to y'all? Everyone's gonna look at me like, hey, yo, how could you let that happen? Mm -hmm. That's the responsibility of us. So that's, the, and that's the pressure we have. So when we say, hey, yo, I'm not gonna get married until I'm financially stable, that's a real thing. Oh, I heard a question coming in. So okay, we, about we to gotta we about to wrap this wait, up. Wait, we're gonna get time I, for I two one, questions. Go ahead. He got to get it off. off. Okay, go ahead. Get I one got, off. Get I, one off. I, and I we got do one more question. We no no no. We need to do. We just need to record an episode together. We just okay. Do we do that. <laughs> okay. We're gonna record it. All right. We want to open it up to the audience for two questions. Wait, though, bro. Hold on. Hold on, dude. Hold on. Smooth. Let me ask this question, baby. Go ahead, dude. I'm with you. And y'all too. So look, y'all been in the game for seven years. We talking about finances and all. Right, yep. we're talking about building with someone. So I want to know, ladies, Shireen, is it more lucrative for women to be single or in a relationship? Oh, mic drop. Uh, I think honestly. Hey, hold on. What do you what do you, what do you, what do you guys think? Is it more lucrative for you as a woman to be single or in a relationship? Relationships are expensive. Hey. Let's hold let's on. hey all things. Let's just let's just say you have a good man. What's Listen, more lucrative? If we're pooling resources, it's definitely more lucrative to be in a relationship. Now, if I'm only bringing my resources and you at the table trying to eat, then that don't make sense for me. We both got to bring something to the table. Oh, you got the audience going right now, bro. You win. And not the table. Hey, 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 seagull, seagull. <laughs> Everybody say seagull. Nah, hey, all right, hey, all right, real quick. Questions. Anybody, we got two questions, two questions. Questions. 
Anybody. I know somebody was getting ready to, ooh, the wire might go crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. I got a question, right? You got, you got one? Okay. You'll be number two, sweetheart. Raise right your there. hand if you got a question. Raise your hand. She right uh -oh. here. I see her right there. I'm moving through the crowd. I'm moving through the crowd. What's up, Rome? What up, Kwame? I see you, you boy. Shout out what to up, Paul? She's been working so hard. EPBK, man. Love Bridget. <laughs> All right. We got a question? Hello, y'all. Um, hi. I'm Ada, and I just want to say God bless you to both of you all, because I know how hard you've been working. So Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Um, so my question is, I have a lot of, you know, men who would define themselves as high-value men. Oh, God. We out oh, here. God. We out here. You know, we, we here. Oh. We here. <laughs> and, we here. <laughs> so in their... Keep going. In their, Keep going. Um, in their heads, they're just very picky, and that might be so, but as you peel back the layers, it's really the case that they're emotionally unavailable or emotionally stunted. So can you all talk about, and, and again, these men are high value in some respects, but when it comes to their emotional capacity, sometimes it's lacking. So can you all talk about, as high value men, some of the work that you've done to create the emotional capacity to, attract a righteous woman? That's actually a really good question. Woo! That's my girl, Ada. She went left and brought it back on me. She's a Stanford graduate. Shout out to Stanford University. Yeah. I knew she was educated. That was, that was good. Mm -hmm. That was um, too good. Y'all who want to take that? I mean, so look, check this out. Talk to us, Jalan. Woo, that process. Okay. Okay. It is men's responsibility to allow somebody to be their mirror. Most of us don't want to look in the mirror and know what we're doing wrong, mm -hmm. where we're falling short, and we allow the finances, the things, for us to lean on. And we were actually talking backstage, and we were talking about a celebrity, and it was like, yo, how can, how can he ever let somebody tell him something with the money that he got? That's kind of the aura that men carry once they get in a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. It is that man's internal job to say, you know what, let me let her be my mirror. Because my girl tell me about the nastiness of myself all the time. <laughs> and it, it's so uncomfortable, but I know it's needed. Because things are, we talk about this all the time, things are simple, not easy, right? Look in the mirror, make the adjustment. Sounds very simple. But when you've been conditioned and you've been doing things the same exact way, you might have seen your parents do it so it's normal to you. You might have seen a couple that you admire do it, so it's normal to you. But when you're in your relationship, you gotta allow your partner to be your mirror. It's a certain level of respect that he has to have for you before he gets to that point. But even before that, it's a certain level of respect that he has to have for himself. Mm -hmm. I want to double. There you go, Jalan. Way to go now. Way to go now. <laughs> I want to begrudgingly agree with him because he get on my nerves, but I do totally agree. Like, for us, early on was so great because it was milestone after milestone, and we were, like, pushing. We were so aligned on trying to, like, get to another level for our future generations, the kids before they were born. But then nobody taught us what to do when you got it together. Mm. And we had to hold up a mirror and be like, yo, do we like each other? Because it was... You know, we were good in a trauma space. Like, oh, let's try and save every fucking dollar to buy our first house. We good, girl. Oh, you say you got another check on oh, R&B house party, got a thousand dollars. We were good then, but then we looked around. We was in LA, owning a home, stuck together, pandemic, and was like, do we like each other? When when you get out all the noise, no, I look, girl. You, see, I'll show you how much I like you. Um, and so we had to be honest with ourselves. And while we faith-based individuals are, okay, we can rely on God, but you also got to do the work. It's tattooed right here, faith without works is dead. So we could say, hey, we trust in God that this thing is going to work out, that we're going to be married forever. But we had to put in the works. So we brought in a third party. We went to marriage counseling. We learned how to speak to each other because mm. I got a tonality to me. But Ooh, Lord, no, whoa, 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 slow down. <laughs> but the boogie down Bronx also. It do. She she had talked to you in a way to be like, whoa, whoa, Lord, is this, 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 this. 
And so furthermore, we had to learn how to talk to each other, but also like how to have uncomfortable conversations with each other. Mm -hmm. And go ahead. I'll say this. If you're in a committed relationship, it's just a series of uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. I don't think series. they ever end because... You're constantly growing, you're constantly evolving. To Charles's point, we were not the same people at 32 that we were at 24 when we met. Our needs had changed, so it was like, okay, what was cool five years ago doesn't fill my cup up anymore. And I need to tell you that because I'm not feeling fulfilled in this. So I think it's just, they're constantly going to be, and they don't have to be fights, they don't have to be arguments, but sometimes it's hard to hear someone tell you that you, what you are doing is not enough. Mm -hmm. But you have to be open to receiving that and hearing that, and part of that is doing the work, going to therapy, looking in the mirror, figuring out what traumas are impacting how you act today, because I think sometimes we don't even realize like things that happened in our past will affect how we navigate the world as it is today. Okay. And knowing your value as a high value man. All Thank right. you very much. We have, no, we have time for one, one more. One more. That's it. One more. One more question. I see your hand right here, Bridget. It's got to be a quick question. Okay. Can we, can we get I a, loved, can we I get loved a, the collegiate question. Can but we get I need, a, a, I need a, a Right here, BK. Way less SAT words for this question. Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Akila. Hey, Akila. Um, I just had a quick question in regard to the word of submission. Um, I hear this a lot. I feel that a lot of people have this word confused, and I just want to know your definition on submission because I know what my personal definition Tell is. Tell us. And I would like to say it's natural. It's an innate thing. I feel like if a man fulfills what I feel he should be fulfilling, it will come naturally. Yeah. So I just want to know what you guys' definition yeah. is. Oh, wow. My thoughts. Go Good ahead, question. Duke. My thoughts on submission is that um, if you're a man that's really doing what he's supposed to be doing, you'll never even have to ask for it. That's, I've never, I've never in my life, in my life, asked a woman to be, or why isn't she being submissive to me? Never in my life. It's never even been a thing, right? So that's my thoughts on it. Um, in the same regard, right, I do understand a lot of men's, um, issue with feeling that way, right? But just being a man and taking a leadership role, I think every man's responsibility is to just lead, right? So we can't wait on a woman to do X, Y, Z before we show her that we are worthy of being submitted to. You understand what I'm saying? As a leader, if some of you guys, you know, believe in that dynamic, as a leader, we can't wait for anything. We just gotta lead by example, lead from the front, and then just hope and wish and just trust that you follow. And if you, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, be doing as a man, and you're not following, you're not, you're not submitting. I'm not going to complain about it. I'm just going to go find something else. And that's it. And that's my thoughts on it. Shereen, can you chime in as a woman who submitted and who I keep locked up, <laughs> who I keep chained up Monday through Saturday in a very. <laughs> Let me chill. I forgot where I was. Can you? Shared the process I, of... What, what did you say? It's simple but not easy? Mm, yeah. It's simple but it's not easy. And as someone who was super independent, I did not want to submit. I was like, why are we doing this? Why, why, would you, why are you doing it that way? I have questions. Mm. But I think it comes with a lot of trust. I think as the leader, you have to also communicate. You just can't be doing stuff blindly that don't make no sense. Um, but in the times when I didn't understand... I also said, you don't have to ask every question. Trust that he has his logic and he's gonna, he's doing this from a place of deep thought and logic and I might not understand every part of it, but I'm gonna trust that he yeah. is making the right decision for our yeah, family. For sure. So it, it's a delicate balance. I think it's super easy to be like, if I found the right one, I would submit. No, you're not gonna sis, you're not gonna submit. You're gonna ask questions, especially when you've been single for so long, you're so independent and I think it can create so much push and pull in a relationship. I know it did for us in the beginning a lot. <laughs> um, there were a lot of ar arguments because um, you didn't feel submitted to. And I was like, well, I got questions. So tell me, just explain to me every single process of your thought process and I'll see if I agree. <laughs> so, 
Um, so t I know for me personally, it took time. Like I was not there the minute I met my Prince Charming. I still, that was something I had to work on internally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, with that being said, okay, I, I want to end on a high value woman taking accountability and submitting to a high value man. So thank y'all so much. <laughs> I want to thank Tree Thomas. Appreciate I want to thank Yannick Jones. I want to thank EPBK. I want y'all to really give it up for my brothers at Nice and Y'all go ahead and stand up. And to my lovely, phenomenal wife, Shereen Kirkendall. Thank y'all so much for coming out. Y'all could have been anywhere in the world, but y'all here with us. Oh, we doing a bow, it's like a show. Let's, let's do a theater bow. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. I'm the party outside. Let's get it. <laughs>